What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the one and only, the true and living legend, Hunter J23. And I want to welcome you guys to a very special edition of Independent Scene Podcast. I am your host, Hunter J, the one and only. As I once said, I am definitely delighted and honored to be with you guys on today. Today, we got a really dope show. We have a we have filmmaker, director, and producer Larry Wright with us on on today. He is going to be talk. To, he's going to be. We're going to be talking about you know his 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 newest project, his newest film. And a couple of other things. Hope that you guys are ready to be tuned in and learn, learn, learn a little bit about that. Um, real quickly before you guys tap in, I need you right now to go to www.youtube.com/slash Independent Scene Podcast and and subscribe to me, where you can catch all the latest interviews right now, going down right here on Independent Scene Podcast. All right. But like I say, with that being said, once again, I am your host. I am the CEO and founder of Independent Scene Podcast. I um I have been doing this for quite some time now, and each and every single time that I get the opportunity to grace you guys with content and and my and and and, and be able to bring you guys this this information and this knowledge, it's always information is always impactful. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you please govern yourselves accordingly and welcome my special guest to Independent Scene Podcast, Mr. Larry Wright. Let's go. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Load of dice. What up? Hi, lovely. What's going on? We got my man, Mr. Wright, coming into the building, guys. Let me see. What's going on, sir? Oh, what's going on? So we good today. Yeah, we good. Everybody, how you doing? Love advice. What up? How are you? Hi, how lovely. Good, what's going on? Good, man. How are you? Hold on, hold on, one second. We got my man, Mr. Wright, coming into the building, guys. Hold on. Did you get me? Let's see. Y'all can hear you. What's going on, sir? Oh, what's going on? So we good today. Yeah, we good. Everybody, we're not doing What up? Oh, How a, you? It's an echo. Hold on. Hold on. Drop in and drop back out. Okay. I, I, no, 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 you good. You good. Can you hear me now? Y'all can hear you. Okay, we good. Then what's going on, brother? What's going on with you, man? How's it going? Man, I appreciate you having me on, man, and being, you know, us getting this thing worked out. Most definitely, um, man. You know, we definitely was gonna get to it, man. And I want to, uh, and I want to throw a shout out to, um, I, I think I know her, the person Oxy, but, um, was the lady, what's her name? Yes, that's got some lovely, lovely, awesome. Look, I think I know her, um, through through Rasheen, but I want to thank her for reaching out to you and let me, you know, get a chance to. You know, let you know what I'm about and what we're doing with my film stuff. I really, you know, I want to thank her for just looking and linking us up. Most definitely, definitely. This all, it's, you know, we it's all love. You know, what I'm saying, you know, I definitely don't have a problem. You know, I said connected with new individuals and new people. You know, what I'm saying learning learning about their journey and their adventure. You know what I mean? That's what's up. That's what's up. Most definitely. Well, first of all, man, real quickly introduce yourself to these fine people, man, and then we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brother Saeed. I'm originally from Greensboro, Plant Grove, New Jersey. This morning. I'm a filmmaker, producer, writer, director. I do film. I do theater. You know, I do. I, I, I have a business partner named Tiffany McKeever, and we have a program. It's called Paper to Film, and we teach young, young men and women how to become media people. It's been a little okay. slow lately. So if anybody that got kids and want their kids to become involved with the media, just tell them to hit me up and I and I got them. You know, you know, like I said, I um and I just do my thing, man. It's trying to um support my people, keep my people aware, and just, you know, and let and, and, and just let my people that know that everything they see on T V isn't like that. But we still have love and harmony in this world. And in our community we still have that love and harmony as well. So, you know, I just don't want us to get discouraged when we see all these things that happen because you know, um, you know, God, you know, God got our back. I mean, it, 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 we just got to go through the process. That part, that part. Okay, okay. Well, listen, man. Like I said, I definitely am honored and grateful to have you on this platform, have you on this channel, man. And like I said, I definitely can't wait to get into this conversation with you, man, because I know, I know you well, got some gems on us. I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. Most definitely. All right. So first things first, man. What made you get into the business, man? What 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 started it for you? Well, I always had a I always had a love for 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 for, for the arts, even as a kid. Like in the eighth grade when I was in middle school, me and a couple of other classmates, we wrote a play. 
Um, it was a gospel play, and it was pretty good. We had one of the um, guy named was Freddie Washington. He was like one of the top gospel and entertainers, and he's still in the industry. His son is named Freddie Washington Jr. That's really um, doing his thing right now. And so we got together, man, did this play. You know, I always had a love for that, but I really got into writing when I did a little bit of, you know, I, I did. I was away for a few, and you know, uh, and um, and I just said, you know, I wasn't going to put my energy into something creative, so I just started writing. And then when I got out, I just took it to, you know, a little bit further. Okay, okay, okay. Nothing wrong with that. So, you know, with so with that, you know, what what has been one of those 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 lessons that you've learned, you know, you know, as far as being, you know, so committed and dedicated to the business. Well, just stay consistent, you know what I mean? Just 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 all we be willing to, you know, we willing to learn, just stay consistent, you know what I mean? Um work with people that have the same passion that you have and and always give people an opportunity to grow with you. You know, like me, I'm one of them kind of directors. I don't really audition a lot. Right. You know, I'll I'll see somebody on the street that look like they that got that look or I'll school some I go to theater plays and films, and I be like, "Listen, I got this project work. Would you like to be part of it?" Okay. You know what I mean, and then we take it from there. Okay. Because that's that's just how I do things. You know what I mean? Because I like, I like to get. I I want to I want to put as many people as I can in the position to share their talents. Okay. And, and share their skills because some people just need that that little door to open for them so they can get in and, and then do their thing. I agree. I agree. Okay. Okay. So with that being said, man, you know, uh, and we had a chance to speak earlier, man. So you have a film out, anti America Under Fire, man. Talk to us about that, man. What, what, and what's the, what, what is the concept behind America Under Fire? Well, America Under Fire, I'll put it to you like this and I get into the story. America Under Fire is going to put, a, put an end to this critical race theory conversation, and okay. it's going to put an end to this. Then they go. Then they got this new thing that I can't remember. The world white people talking about black people going to move them from. It's a new conversation they call. It, but they, whoever like they know what I'm talking about. But this film is about educating people on the fifth and fourteenth amendment. Okay. This film is about. This film is about three attorneys taking America before the world court. Okay. And the whole argument is based on the fifth and fourteenth amendment. And if people don't know what the 15th or 14th Amendment is, they're basically the same amendments. One of, them, one of them, the Fifth Amendment pretty much is about the rights for black, the individual. And the 14th Amendment is saying that we're supposed to get the same thing that white people are supposed to get. Okay. And, and what I try to explain to people, which the Indians are, the Indians are naturalized citizens here. But other than but legal based on white people legal term, there were only two black there are only two black nat, there's only two naturalized citizens in America. Okay. That's black people and white people. Black people and white people based on their on their paper is is black people and white people are the only naturalized citizens. So if we are the only naturalized citizens, why aren't we getting everything they're getting equally across the board? Right. Why are they still looking out at us and treating us like we're second class citizens? Right, right. You okay. get what I'm so this film, this film deals with all of that and what makes and what and what people, you know. And I'm and and I'm not saying this hasn't been done, but what I'm saying is when people see this film and when people see how we put it together, they will finally get an opportunity to see three black people, Afro-American people, mulatto people, whatever people want to call them, they will actually get a chance to see three black people challenging this American system and three people from the defense trying to defend the American system. Mm. You know, and we don't, and, and when we deal with, when we deal with the black struggle, every time we deal with a film about the black struggle, either somebody white defending us or we the oppressed, suppressed, beat up black person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So this film takes away from all that stereotype. Right. And, and I want to throw a mad shout out to my business partner, well, my writing partner, Glenn Jones, who's a retired attorney. And he kind of said, man, I wrote this script. It was like 10 past. I'm just going to play with it a little bit. He was like, man, we're going to turn this into something deep. 
So when people see it, they can understand why we are. It's not, see, it's not the thing with asking them for reparation. This is the problem we got. Right. We are owed reparation. And any lawyer today or any, any law team today can submit this conversation before the world court and have this argument, but they won't do it. Right. So, I, so, so this film is going to touch, you know, it's going to like kind of give everybody a nudge on what, what we have the capability of doing, especially from a legal standpoint. Okay. 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 Well, you guys definitely make sure you guys, when it, whenever it drops, y'all make sure y'all go and see it, man. And let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's make, let's make history out here. Let's support. All right. So my next question I have for you, who has been, who, who has been some of your biggest influences, you know, going into getting into this industry? Well, well, I put it to you like this. My, my biggest influence is my mom. Okay. Shout out because to my mom. And, and and I say my biggest influence is my mom because all the shit that she, all the stuff that she's been through, mm -hmm. all the stuff that she went through to make sure that her kids were, were safe and well taken care of and, and and was brought up right, That that's my biggest influence. Now, my influence as far as being in this industry is, is um as, and you know, I tell people this, Bruce Willis is probably my biggest influence okay. and he's from Pennsylvania, where I'm from. And the only reason why I say he's my biggest influence because he, if he did it, he encouraged me to try, you know, to keep doing what I'm doing. As far as with the industry, because he's from a small town, the same small town I'm from, and he did it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about my influences, he, ha I have to say not just because he's from Bendo, because he's from my town and he did it. So that encouraged me to try to, and just to move forward and try to, and do what I do. You know, my other influences, you know, is, um, is Denzel. You know, um, and, and, and really, you know, it's like, it's like the, this, this film community is definitely uh, influencing me because we always striving to, you know, to get shit done. And, you know, we always right there, you know, trying to do what we can do to, um, just get our foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and I have to throw a shout out to my sister, Alize. Alize, um, she's a act, she's a screenwriter, filmmaker, actor. And, 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 um, I'm, and, um, she, she's really doing her thing. Okay. And, um, and, you know, people know who Alize is, trust me. So you see her, she's like on everything, but I got to give her a mad shout out because she's doing her thing and she like motivates me and motivates all of us to, to keep it moving. Most definitely. Okay. Okay. So with that being said, and I, and by the way, I pre and definitely, I definitely appreciate that response, man. So, you know what? What is your? Why are you so passionate about about this film? You know, I'm. You know that we and I don't. And this is no knock to nobody. This is not a knock on anybody. But we make the, like the same films all the time. Right. We make the same. Not just black people, but everybody make the same films all the time. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. You know what I mean? And, you know, and everything else you know, that, that goes with that. And, you know, that's fine in itself, you know what I mean? But I got some stuff out there. I mean, I don't make a lot of money, but I got some stuff out there. I do pretty good, you know what I mean? But I don't make a lot of money where I can say I go out and buy a Mercedes and this and that, you know. But this, this, I, I'm one of them kind of guys. I have got hood films. I got one coming out called Butter that's going to be on. I got one coming out called Butter. It's going to be on Blavity TV, B-L-A-V-I-T-Y. So you might not have heard of Blavity TV. I have. I so have. it's going to be coming out on Blavity TV. It's a five-part miniseries called Butter. Okay. It's, a fee it's about a female action hero. Mm. Yo, so that's, yeah. But this, I'm more into doing, like, social shit, like social empowerment, black empowerment, social stuff. Okay. You know, because I think that we have enough, we have enough, of the other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and, and, and the, and the thing about my stuff is, and I tell people this all the time, if Hollywood came, came and gave me a hundred million dollars and said, we want you to shoot this script and we want you to shoot it this way. I'm going to do it because they pay me a hundred million dollars. Right. Now, if it's something that goes against, it goes against my integrity. I, my word is born on a lot. I'm going to do it. Right. So, but being an independent filmmaker, Cause you know, if you look at our black stories, if you look at Malcolm, if you look at Martin Luther King, if you look at the Nat Turner movie, if you know, you look at these movies, they everybody dies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Who's supposed to be named uh, Mega Evan? He died. Everybody dies or get killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All these years, they talking about the nation killed Malcolm. Now we came to find out that the New York police the FBI the FBI killed Malcolm. And the oh. thing about it is, yeah, yeah. And the thing about it is, it's like if we look at the history of our black, and I don't call them. This is what I tell people. If my dad was Martin Luther King and they killed my dad, my dad is not a hero. My dad is a victim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a victim to me because he's not here with me. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. So, so, so what I'm doing is I, I, I've created with my business partner, Glenn, writing partner, Glenn Jones, we created a story that can't be compromised because it's our story. We paid for it. We did everything. Mm -hmm. So we, we ain't got to worry about nobody saying, you know, you got to do this. Just like the last documentary, Spike did a documentary about four or five months ago about something, and they and they told him he had a he had to tone it down. Why you got to tell us to tone our black shit down? But you can make Mississippi burning, you can make a time to kill, and shit like that. But they don't turn tone that shit down. Mm -hmm. you know I, mean? I agree. So 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 with me doing so with me doing this film, you know. We have a, we have a, and and the thing about it is once people see the film, it's so professionally done. It's not like the old jigaboo black nigger and sitting in a courtroom, hair dressed, nappy hair. Right. The whole conversation is is professionally put together. The conversation is professionally put together. But we're challenging the system, and when, and and once people once people see this story and see. The, the conversation and the, and the evidence that we're presenting, they can be like, "Well, damn, this 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 is some real shit." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because everything about the film is real except for the characters. Okay, okay. Now you know, so that. Go ahead. So, and that's why I'm so passionate about doing what I do. You know, I'm 64 years old, bro. Wow. And I tell people right now, I can't march up and down the street with y'all no more. But I can put stuff together on film, and I can put stuff together in the theater that's going to that's going to um, that's going to create the same conversation. But people just need to come and see it so they can understand where I'm coming from as a, as a black man, as a black writer, and a black producer, and as a black director. And 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 people have this and people have this issue with me because I don't believe in people of color conversation. I don't, and I'm, and I, and this is why I tell people, I don't believe in the people of color conversation. When you put every shit together, everybody separate themselves from Black America. The Africans to separate themselves from us. The Arabs to separate themselves from us. The white people separate themselves from us. Everybody is se is separate themselves from us, except when they want to put a business in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So the African American or the Black man or Lado. We are on we are on this island alone every day, all day by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when people say the people of color, I'm not a person of color. I'm like, I look at me like you like look at white people as an individual group. Mm -hmm. That group, but that's how black people. And once black people start thinking like that, and stop, you know, looking for this certain type of acceptance from other people, we'll be better off. Right. Right. Wow, wow! Such a powerful response, man. That's that's such a powerful response. So it's definitely it's definitely one of those things that's a, that, you know when you sit back and you notice it for yourself, it, it, it's evident. You know what I mean? So, so so here's my question to you. You know, being you know being a filmmaker, producer, director. You know, my question to you is why is there so much diversity? Why is there so much diversity? Why is there so much? uh confrontation in this industry with as far as you know people of whether it be people of color or, or whomever trying to be the top person or the top the top dog I, 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 it's like how can i put this people aren't people aren't willing to share the success or the failures mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying you know, no matter how we look at, no matter how we look at it, somebody is going to be considered the best. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? somebody's gonna like, like you know, it's just like with the acting thing. You know, it, when and, and I want people to understand what I'm saying. When Denzel and Larry Fishburne 
and guys in that con- in that neighborhood, and this is couple, uh, 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 what's the guy? The right guy can't think is right now. J- Jeffrey Wright, uh, Live Fritz Brown, Fritz Brown, Denzel, and it's a couple of other actors that's older. Once they leave the game, it's going to be hard for young African American males to get in the game like that because they're working with a lot of foreigners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And then, and, and I, I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad. I mean, because we, I can't tell people to do with their money. Right. So what I encourage young black men and black women to do, focus on being behind the camera opposed to being in front of the camera because you guarantee, and if you get in where you fit in, if you do a great job, you guarantee to work every day. Right. And I'm not saying, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that you know that African American males or black males. Or my, I'm not saying that they won't get work. But if you're just looking at it at, at it right now, most of these major black guys that are doing getting these major roles aren't African African American men. Wow. And 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 the thing about it is, if these brothers speak on that now, the hate. Nah, it's not that they hate. They just want to. They just they just work want to work and be you know get the opportunity. Right. So. Right, you know, it's like even with the LBGP community, and I tell people this: I don't have a problem with what lifestyle you choose to live. You can do whatever. Right. I mean, but when people, when people try to force stuff on you to create a conflict, a conflict or a confrontation, that's not good. Right. I agree with that. You feel what I'm saying? I definitely. So, do. and I'm talking about in entertainment, even like in, in, in life. If that's what you want to, if you, if that's what you want to do, don't make it seem like you're pushing the black heterosexual out the door in favor of the. And I, and I don't know if I want to say homosexual or I just say the LGBT community. Don't right. don't make it don't make it seem like that's what you're doing. But and sometimes that's what it look like. Right. True. True. You're right. Yes. And I'm just you know, and I'm just keeping it 100 because, like I said, I have love for everybody. Right. Yeah, that's, and you know, and it's funny that you say that, man, because, you know, I think a lot of times that's where, you know, the stigma is, 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 you know, is debatable a lot of times. You know, you, you, know, you have people out here that are, you know, living comfortably in their own skin, living their truth. But then, like you say, you got others out here that, that can, like you said, can push the, that can push it on others. And a lot of people aren't gonna, a lot of people aren't gonna be cool with that, or aren't gonna be comfortable with that. So that's definitely, that's definitely understandable. Yeah, but you know, like I guess I, I, you know, I do what I do. I, I, I support. You know, I, I support people no matter what their genre is because entertainment. You know, this I'm, I'm gonna say this, and people better listen to what I'm saying. Once people let, once the, the I'm gonna say once the influence. Start influencing art. That's when the world gonna come to an end. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Listen to what I'm, t- listen to what I'm telling you now. That's real. That's real. Cause, 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 see what people don't understand about art, and and you know I don't want these I don't want these I don't want these these Christian haters to get the hate on what I'm saying because, and I say Christian haters because everybody always blaming Christianity for dumb shit they do. Christianity ain't got nothing to do with it. Islam ain't got nothing to do with it. At all. You see what I'm saying? At, At all. all. So so I I tell I tell people I tell people this. We can't blame Christianity for the shit that we do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's our escapism. Right. And we can't blame Islam for the shit that we do, what people do. That's our escapism. What we need to do is is understand who we are. And 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 work on self. Because mm-hmm. after we work on se- once we work on self and self get better, we're a better person. Right, right. That's true. You know, I'm you know, I'm kind of getting off base here, so I, you know, I need to come back. But that's that's just that's just how I. But you know, you know, like I said, it's real though. It's real deal shit. So you know, when you you know, it's like when you put it into perspective, you know, you can't help but realize and understand that this is really how society in the world is moving. You know what I'm saying? So it was, I definitely, I definitely can agree and can relate to that. You know what I mean? So, so let me, so let me ask you this. So now, you know, you know, you, you know, when you look at people like you know the 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 Oprahs and the Tyler Perry and the Lee Daniels 
of, you know, the Denzel Washingtons and, you know, the Richard Pryors and things of that nature. You know, what makes your style and your and, and what you do so different from any of these other entertainers and local people out here? In the, what makes your style and your, and your style so different? I don't think this. This is the thing. This is the, this is the thing. I'm glad you brought it up because I had a conversation with that. It's like basketball. You know, I'm gonna come back to that. It's like Michael Jordan. Everybody say Michael Jordan was the greatest player ever. To me, I don't think he was the greatest ever. But what made Michael Jordan stand out from the from amongst the rest of everybody? He took the game to a new height. Mm -hmm. So instead of jumping, instead of jumping from the the fucking the dotted line, or instead of jumping two feet from the basket and dunking. Mike was dunking from the foul line and doing stuff that people have done in the past. It's just that when they brought him in, he was the poster child. So yep. if you if you got me on TV every day for 365 days a year and I do something that you like, what you want to do? Right. People want to follow me. Exactly. You know what I mean? I and I just like, you feel what I'm saying? Right. You I know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like a million people probably had done it, but he was in the right place at the right time. And I just like, with, and you know, I tell people this all the time, and they say, Doc, you got to listen. What makes people better than me, and what makes people in that level better than us as independent filmmakers? Somebody like what they did and offered them a big check to make it, to, to improve what they did. Mm -hmm. That's it. Wow. You yeah. feel me? Right. I somebody did. gave them somebody gave them the check and said, You shot this film for thirty thousand. I'm gonna give you a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, a million to shoot the same film, but now you can bring people in that's gonna make your job easier. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we have great actors, we got great directors, but you know, if 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 somebody came to me right now and gave me twenty million dollars to shoot a movie, what what there's no limitation to what we can do. Right. That's true. Cause hey, like they said, when the, when the money's good, you know you gonna have to you run to you got you know you got to run to it. <laughs> yeah. you know so you know it's like when the when the money's good, everything else is 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 better. <laughs> All right, it you, is. You know it's like it's just like with the film we're doing now. I think we did a great job, okay. but in the acting, in the acting is superb. There's some things that you know we could have probably done a little bit better, but but if somebody was to see this film and say, hey man. I'm gonna give y'all ten million to shoot this film over. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, people will watch that film and say, "Well, this is some real deep shit right here," because more people have opportunity to see it. And and and, and with the film, this, I wholeheartedly believe, I wholeheartedly believe that once people get a breath of this film and see what we're presenting, they're gonna understand why I'm so passionate about it, why my cast is passionate about it. Why the crew was passionate about it? Why my co-worker was passionate about it? Because everything in this film, we gonna we, this is going this is how it's gonna open the film. Everything in this film can be googled. Mm -hmm. So when you when you see something in that film, you Google it. It's gonna tell you. Yeah, Google is the source. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that's what it's gonna say. During this film. You can Google you Google any part of this conversation, and then you're going to get a true understanding of why we did this film. Right, right. Okay. You know. okay. So let me ask you this. So for all the young up-and-coming filmmakers and producers that wants to, you know, travel in the same, this same, travel in the same field and, and do the same thing, what are some of the steps and things that they need in order to make it and mm -hmm. to succeed? Let me tell you something. There is no, there is no, there's one step you got to do. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody do this. First thing you got to do, if you got a phone, you got a camera, you got whatever, you go out and write yourself a little script, get your, get your team together and say, hey, we're going to shoot a movie. Okay. Not, and I also tell people this, you don't have to go out and buy no thousand dollar camera. You ain't got to go out and buy no, no fifty thousand dollar camera. You can go out here and buy a camera. All these cameras is 4K now. All these cameras is 1080p right now. Some some of these phones, I'm talking about the phones, some of these phones are 6K. You get your phone, you get your crew together, and y'all put something together and y'all make it work. That's that that's that's that it, and then everything grows from there. Right, right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So when people talking about 
It's the game has changed now. You know, Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy, Master Pena got rich by selling shit out that trunk. That's the same way you do with the with the uh, with being an independent filmmaker. Put your shit together, and whatever you whatever you think is going to work for you, you do it. Mm-hmm. And you just learn from I mean, even major motion pictures still make mistakes in film. They do. That they do. You know, what I mean? so, and you just and you just build from that. Okay. Okay. So now, you know, so so looking at the state, you know, looking at the state of work of what we're in now, you know, with everything that we that we've had to endure, you know, just in America alone, you know, with the you know with the COVID and pandemic situation now to the, you know, the the social injustice, the police police brutality. I want to get so I want to get your thoughts on that, you know, as a as an African American man, as a black man, you know, when you hear when you see and hear these these types of stories coming coming out of America, like what are, what are your thoughts on that, or what things, what can you say to kind of I guess kind of help improve, you know, uh, our country or our world? See what what we got to do is we got to step we got to stop letting speak we got to stop letting people speak for us. Right, and we have to, and we have to get rid of these black politicians that speak for us but think like white people. Right, like white politicians, we have to do that. And see, like the jet, like like the generation Xers, y'all are in the perfect position right now to make gra- drastic changes, but y'all all over the place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Y'all smarter than we are. You technically sharper than we are. You have and listen, y'all have y'all have the, the means to control anything because it's it's so many of y'all y'all think alike. But the bottom but the bottom line is, you know, and I want young people to correct me if I'm wrong, but the bottom line is y'all got too much shit going on. I would tell if if I knew some young people that was in politics that was really wanted to make a smooth, I would tell them to pull up the ideology of the Tea Party. Okay. The Tea Party. And I want people to understand, and this is what young people need to be doing. You pull up the ideology and the and the and the and the and the and the framework and the paperwork of that Tea Party. The Tea Party, they they won six eight nine years ago. They infiltrated the Republican Party and won six. It's just that when they got in, some of them some of them backstabbed the other Tea Party members and became allies to the Republicans, and some of them just didn't know politics. Right. So we that was a third party. They like the Tea Party, and 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 they and they done stuff, right? But people still, we still around here crying about the Democrats and the Republicans. It's not people here for a third party, but we just and, and you know we just fixated on that 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 them two parties. You right. know, with the COVID and with the COVID thing, I mean, we complain about black people not getting this and black people not getting that. But you know what, though? Let me tell you something, bro. And I, and I, and. This COVID thing affected a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And a lot of white people didn't get help. A lot of color people of color didn't get help. So we was all in the same boat on that. And but the bottom line is we we as black people know where we stand. So and if black people really and if they really wanted to if they really, 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 really wanted to help the COVID thing, like in the sixties and seventies when I was coming up, if they was that serious about helping the black community, all these black doctors would have would have built a clinic in the black neighborhood or made a set up like you know set up tents and do whatever in all these black neighborhoods and said look we're going to serve our people right right that's true you feel me that's true that's so true. we can't we can't we, we can't blame the government for shit that black because the thing about the covid is if them black doctors had got together they would have gave them shit to help black people because they this this was a this is a world epidemic Mm-hmm. Pandemic, you know what I mean? So all them black doctors should have said, "Listen, we gonna get together in these towns, and we gonna start putting together these little clinics and stuff ourselves." Then, if they don't help us, then we got to Then we then then we have a reason to 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 complain and talk about you know the help that we're not getting. Okay, okay. So now let me ask you this: so with that, so with that being said, you know, five to ten years from now, you know, what I'm saying where 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 else do you see? So do you have? Are there any other hidden talents or skills that you have that you would love to pursue? You know, a, a, alongside. Listen, now, let me tell you this: I got eighteen months. I can retire, okay. and I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this, and I, my wife probably gonna get mad at me. When I retire in 18 months, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna sit in my backyard. 
I'm gonna put on my funkadelic music or whatever music I like, and I'm gonna smoke weed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. So, so, but so whatever they say, when they ask my wife what's how you doing, she gonna say you already know. I don't get high now, you know what I mean? I was, a, I was, a, I'm an ex drug addict. I, I, I did drugs for 15 years. Okay. Well, I think I can handle some weed. But then again, in two years, I might not even do that. I just might just sit home, sit in my backyard, and enjoy my grandkids. Okay. 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 You know. You know. No. But that's. No. I ain't, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. All right. So real quickly, I want to kind of switch gears. I want you to kind of talk to us a little bit about your growing up. What was growing up like for you? You know, and and, um, and and being a kid, having those childhood memories, and then finally realizing what it is that you wanted to do. Like, what was that childhood like for you? As a as a poor kid, and I'm sure poor kids can relate. You know, and I'm not. You know, as a poor kid, and we was poor. Mm -hmm. um, I had the best childhood ever. Okay. I had the best childhood ever because you know I had brothers and sisters. We, you know, back then you played baseball, you played little league baseball, you played tag, you you did this every. The families would get together on the weekend, and everybody would grill out. They get drunk, play cards, talk shit, and all the kids out there playing, everybody looked out for everybody. You right. know what I mean? And it was just it was just a it was just a thing. And even if people didn't really get along, it was a re it was a respect thing. You know okay. what I mean? I know where you stand and you know where I stand, but we got enough respect for each other just to keep that bullshit somewhere else. Right. You know what I mean? Like we still had the fights and stuff, you know what I mean? My brother, he's a vic my brother is a is a um is a is a victim of, of gun violence. Wow. You know what I mean? But that I didn't, and I mean, I didn't let that, you, you know. And I'm gonna come back, but see, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not against gun owners. Okay. You know what I mean? So when people say we're against guns. I'm not against gun owners, and my brother was killed with gun. I'm just against people that have the guns that don't re that don't respect the gun. Mm. Wow! 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 Because once you steal somebody, you can't take it back. Exactly, exactly. Now, and, you know, and 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 we, you feel what I'm saying? Like, and moving forward, we got so much. We we have so much gun violence that people don't respect the gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They and they lost value for life. And that all and that all comes from not loving and respecting your parents or yourself. Mm -hmm. That's where all this comes from. And I tell people this all the time. I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're not Christian. I don't care what you are. If you don't have love and respect for your parents, you're not going to have love and respect for yourself. That's true. That's true. And that's where all this, that's where all this shit come from. Wow. Wow. That's powerful, man. You know, especially when you put it like that, you know, because, you know, it's like I said earlier, you know, when you, you know, when you're in a, we're living in, in a day and time and in a society where, it's like everybody's trying to be on top. Everybody's trying to be number one. But when you have your own drive and your own passion, your own determination, and people are able to see that, I mean, then, hey, the rest, you know, it's like the, really the rest speaks for itself, honestly. Yeah. And see, and, you know, the rapper said, everybody want to be a gangster, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you feel me? You know, and it's, and it's like, how, how, it's, it, what disturbs me the most about this whole, about the way this whole game is being played, we as a people can change it overnight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the system. I see what the system is doing. The system is letting all this go on because the system is setting us up for martial law. You got all this. Listen, if you can find if you can find Ben Laden in a hole, and you can kill Saddam Hussein, and you can kill. Omar Gaddafi, and they killed him because he was make they was working on changing the currency. But you could kill them three. You mean to tell me you can't stop the gun flow? You can't stop gun violence with all these satellites that can right now they could take a satellite and look at my room where I'm sitting, and you tell me they can't control the gun the gun violence? Yeah, yeah. And we, you know, yeah. You know, we worrying about. We ran about we ran about police brutality, which we should. But when you got a man going in there killing ten, fifteen people and seven, eight people, 
I think, I mean, we need to worry about the police brutality, but I think we need to focus more. I don't want to say more. I think we need to really focus on these nuts that got these guns. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's crazy you mentioned that because I was just about to bring up. You know, you, you know, we had, you know, we heard, we, you know, all around the world, it was, you know, it was reported that, you know, the, this, the, the mass shooting that went on in Texas. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. You know, I mean, like, you well, know, let me, I want, I want you, to, I want people to, I want people, see, domestic terrorism is, is, is the biggest fear that we as Americans should have, opposed to international terrorism. Mm -hmm. Because if people really look at the, the if people really look at the, the terrorist acts that have went on in this country, they were done by white people from America, people from America. Mm -hmm. You look at the majority. You know, you 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 remember the um, Oklahoma City bombing? I do. They, they built they blew that building up. That building had kids in it. You see what I'm saying? Right. Right. Just and you look at the line of how things are going. Right. So when we when we start talking about terrorist acts, they need to stop diverting the con the conversation about international terrorism or diverting it to this war in Ukraine and and deal with what we got going on right here in America. Wow. But and 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 but you know and um and you know we can't you can't blame. You can't blame this president for everything. You got to blame all the presidents. Right, right. But I, but I will say this. But I will say this. And I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you cut in. When Obama became president, that it, it was starting to. That was the start of the of the hate. Mm -hmm. mm. But Trump, that was the start of the hate. Right. But Trump, when he got in, he 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 made. He made the system and those who follow that system um, more openly accepted, openly accepting their ignorance mm -hmm. about how they look and feel about people. Mm. Wow. Wow. You feel me? I do. Yeah, that, that there is, you know, and... You know, and I was gonna say this because you brought up you brought up presidents, man. You know, you know, we hear so much about these presidents, man, and it's like, in a sense, you don't really know what to believe. So to me, it's just like, you know, <laughs> you know, when when is this country? Do you, or let me, matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, let me ask this question: Do you feel like the world and the country can get back to where it used to be, or do you do, or do you feel like as a black man, as African American man, this is but that this is now what it's supposed to be for us? You know. I would say that anything is possible. Okay. But people but people have to connect themselves with something or someone, some being that create peace in their heart. True. <laughs> you feel me? If you don't have peace in your heart, this ain't gonna never change. And it's a lot of good it's a lot of good people out there. A lot of good people out there. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to show you that on TV about all these good people out there doing good deeds because then people are going to start wanting to feel better about themselves and doing good about themselves. That's, so they keep, you know, it's like it's like every young black person get killed now is a, is a rapper. Young rapper. Okay. Oh, he wasn't even famous. Right. Had, you just can't say this. Hadn't he made it yet. Right, you can't just say the young black male got killed. He's a young rap. So now they demonize. Now they demonize and rap. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So unless we get love in our heart, shit ain't gonna change, bro. That's why I tell people, man, it's overly important to to respect and love your your siblings to the utmost. Right. And if you, if you and your brother and you and your sister or sisters have an issue, they need to squash that shit. They need to do everything in their power to squash it. Even if, even if they just come to an agreement that they love and respect each other, and they still want to not associate, that's fine. But you got to get peace of mind, and your peace of mind is going to come from people suddenly their difference and just move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever watched Mike Tyson? You ever watched Mike Tyson show? I have. I tell people this. 
if they want to look at a show where people can really get educated and be inspired, they should look at his talk show. Because he's deep in hell. I agree. I agree. I definitely agree. Wow. Wow. Such powerful responses, man. I, I'm I'm literally sitting here learning, man, and taking notes in my head from you, man. And I definitely, uh, I never got to say, man, I truly have been enjoying this conversation, man, for real. So my last, my last question I have for you, man, is, you know, for anybody that has been trying to find their niche, trying to find their place, whether it be in society, whether it be in whatever career field they choose, what is one thing that you can tell them to – for them to know in their mind and in their heart that they can be anything they want to be just as much as the next person. What is that one? You thing? know, I'm going to take you back to my high school days. And I, me and a teacher got in this conversation. i never forget it. You know, I I tried. You know, I had a final English. Okay. You know, and I needed English to graduate. And I did, man, I went to, I got me, they gave, I got me a tutor. I went to all my classes. I've done everything. Now, I did graduate, though. I did everything, man, just to, to be, you know, my, to get that grade that I wanted. And I tried 100%. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get that grade I wanted, but I passed. Okay. And I had to tell my teacher this. I said, listen, I put 100% in making this, getting, trying to get the grade that I wanted. I said, I did my tutors. I did everything. Right. But. I improved. Mm -hmm. So if me putting it in 100% show some improvement, why aren't you happy for me? Right, right, right. Because I didn't get the A or B you wanted? I got a C. Yeah. And it's not that I wasn't trying to get a C. I was trying to get an A or a B because I put so much work into it. Right. So what I tell people is never, ever let nobody discourage you or 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 sacrifice or how can I tell? Never let a person discourage you from your dream. Some dreams, there's something we just can't do. We just have to move on. But if you know, I don't believe in 110% of shit. I believe in 100%. Right. If you put 100% in, in that and you know you put in 100%, don't let nobody tell you you was a failure. That just might not be something for you. But, you know, find your other niche and put 100% in that until something works. Okay. So it's not, you know, if, like I said, if you know you didn't try and you failed, you know, it, we, you know, um, we as people, this is the gift, this is the gift God gave us, not arguing with people about this. God gave us, God gave us one gift, and we are the same person. He gave us common sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, now people can influence your common, they can come in and influence right. how you think. But even when a person influences you, before they get in your head, you have doubt. You you will you will have a doubt. Mm -hmm. So God gave us the ability to rationalize and irrationalize if we're the same person. Right. But when we let people get in our head, that's where the problem comes in. So if a person put in a hundred percent and they know to put in a hundred percent, don't feel bad about yourself. Just keep it fucking moving. That part. That part. That's you know. Wow, man! Listen, I sit, I sit, I feel like I can talk. I can keep talking to you, man. But uh, we, yeah, yeah. But next time, listen, my film premiere July the seventeenth. I want you to come. Okay. I want you to come. You got you 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 come. And um, matter of fact, your show can be the official host if you want to interview and do all that kind of shit. Okay, I appreciate that. I, appreciate I mean, you got that. And now, uh, and um, and you know, and uh, I'm glad you had me on. I really appreciate it. You gave me a chance to, you know, um introduce myself most definitely man I, i'm glad i was able to do it man and uh like i said i definitely hope that you've enjoyed you know what I'm saying you know this this time um and uh i definitely can't wait to see what's next coming from you uh real quickly let people know where they can follow or get in contact with you for for more information okay well all you gotta do is go to you can go here larry sw1 on instagram but my facebook is larry Sae right and then I can just, that'll take you to everything else that I do. Most definitely. Most now, let me ask you this. Will I be able to share this? Uh, you will. Like I said, once, the, once, this, once the live ends, and I, you'll definitely be able to share it for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. But like I said, yeah, they can go to Instagram, LarryS31, on my Facebook page, Larry Saeed Wright, and, um, and they, they can get all the information. But I, listen, I'm telling, I'm telling people right now, 
That theater holds 300 people. Mm. I want to see 300 people in there July the 17th to be educated and inspired and, 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 and be part of this great conversation we're about to have. And listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to let you go. Go. The, 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 the cast for this film, the cast for this film, uh -huh. I hand, I handpicked. Okay. I handpicked this cast for, for, and I handpicked them for a reason. Okay. So when people see the film, they will understand why I picked this cast. Then I'll explain it to them. Okay. Okay. Well, definitely, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, you may go out and June 17th, make sure you go out and go see America Under Fire. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be in theaters. Go and, go, and, go and watch that. You know what I'm saying? Drop comments. You know what I'm saying? On, and give, send, send, it, send in the review. Let us, know what you, let us know what you think about it. And uh, you know, say so who knows you might, you know, so y'all probably see me on, you know, see me on, see me on site. But like I said, this has been my time, ladies and gentlemen. I am the one and true living legend, Hunter J Twenty Three of Independent Scene Podcast. Once again, such a thank to my to our, our guest, Mr. Larry Wright, film film and producer, filmmaker and producer. Man, definitely it was great talking to you, man. Definitely keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I look forward to chopping up with you again sometime later on down the line. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you, brother. Most so, and, I, and, I always got, and I always got close with this. Get the black mind right. Peace. That peace. <laughs>